We're going to create a start button as the first screen of the game. If you have multiple screens, it's probably better to use a state management system. However, this is a simple way with just um, to check with some Boolean checks as to what state the game is in. So we just create a new button. We just copied the previous button and we'll call this one start button, which is just a sprite component with the mix in tappable. When the game starts, we're going to add the woman introduction. So there'll be a Boolean variable within the start button for add woman. And this is how we're going to check to see in the game loop when the woman should be added to the game. All we're doing with this particular variable is just change the state of the game, meaning that we're going to flip the add woman variable to true. The main concept here is that there just needs to be some way to keep track of what screen you are in the game. Uh, this is not the best practice, although, because it won't be scalable, although, you know, for a simple game, uh, it will work. So we're going to create a, the start button as a um, sprite component here. It's going to be late because we need to load the graphic from the, uh, the local storage prior to putting it into the game. In the onload method, we're actually going to instantiate the start button and then add it to the game. Well, then we'll not add the woman, uh, the main character of the game, of, of this intro, to... We're, we're going to take out the add portion and then only add her when this Boolean flag on the start button, it says to add the woman. Pretty simple logic, but it's probably better to keep things simple so you, you can just keep going. Um, when you start doing the state management system, it may get a little, just a little bit more confusing. So we'll keep it simple. And we'll have the, uh, the start button be right in the center. And so if we switch the anchor point of the uh, the sprite component to the center, it'll be easy, easier for us to match up the center point of the sprite component, which will be the start button, with the center point of the screen. So the, the screen, the flame game, has a size component for the width and the height. And we'll divide that by two, which will be the center point of our game. And since the a start button, the anchor point of the start button is also the center of that sprite component. We can, when we add it, it should be right in the center. We're not going to add the woman in in the onload method because we're going to wait for this uh, event, which is the tapping on the start button to take place before we add her. So the start button will start this chain of events, right? So not only will the woman, uh, the, the heroine of our story here, be added to the screen, uh, she'll also start to grow, or the scale of the character, which is starting off at 100 by 100 pixels, will start to increase, and she'll also start to rotate for this type of introduction effect that we're trying to put in place. So we're going to set up a the if check right at the top, and, and then we'll have all her code within this if check. If you're going to continue on, you, it's probably better if you break out the uh, the logic or uh, the algorithm to grow her into a separate method. We're going to add the woman in the render method. So the render method is built into the flame game. Because it's an existing method of flame game, we're going to have to use the override decorator and then we can put our own render method there and change it but first we'll run the parent uh, the super class of the render method so that's super dot render will run the existing render from flame game and then we can put our own code in here and this is a way to uh, change what happens when the render method is run so we'll if it's time to add the woman, we'll first remove the start button because that's what first appears. Then we'll add the woman in. Okay, let's try to restart the game. It's looking good so far. And 
the start button works, the actions for the woman are taking place. Okay. So let's also add some text in addition to the background music uh, in a box that is on the screen after the girl completes or the woman completes her initial introduction, which is the spinning and the scaling. So create a string uh, within the flame game. Uh, I just made up some introduction to some type of mystery. Uh, maybe there's a some type of evil presence or evil monster that's encroaching upon a town. The woman is a postal worker. Her sprite or her graphic is from the Carl Murray. And it did say that she was a postal worker. So I guess this could be the basis of the story. Maybe there's some heroic deed by the player of the game that save the woman and save the town. But for now, let's just get her message on the screen, her cry for help here. So we'll create a new class for her message. Uh, we'll call it woman text box. And this will be her, her cry for help that will first appear on the introduction screen after she completes uh, moving in visually. We'll have it extend the text box component. And this is part of Flame. It's a component and we can adjust it on the screen. We'll have the component accept the string as a piece of text. And then we'll pass it to the super class with the box config. And this is the box config is uh, the thing that will give us a lot of the uh, animation for this. It holds a time per character, which is a double. It's the amount of seconds, so 0 0.2 seconds per character. We're going to have it come out one after another, um, maybe just to give it some additional suspense. You could have it come out all at once as well, too. This is kind of what effect do you want as the game creator? Do you want the audience waiting for the text to appear or not? Then we need some type of background uh, for the box. I'm going to create the background color of the text box as the same as the background color of the game screen. So the the text the text box background will be will appear to be invisible, but that's just because it's the same color as the main uh, background image. And we're using this set of rectangles and canvas, which is from the Dart UI. So if you wanted to brush up more on the uh, the rectangle and uh, the draw rect and the paint, you can refer to the Dart UI documentation. LTWH is simply left top with height. And that's how the rectangle is formed. And the other important thing is this paint, of which we're just using the color property. That's how you do it. We just need to set up the text box component. So it's a component of Flame, and thus it will have a lot of the methods and properties from other Flame components. We'll just follow the same convention. So we'll start off as late and then we'll, we will instantiate the woman text box component within the onload method. Like other position components, the woman text box will have an anchor point and she will have a position on the screen. The default width is 200 pixels. So if you don't specify a width, it's going to be 200 pixels. You can, you can specify a width. Uh, it's not set up that way right now. But if you look at the documentation, uh, you'll be able to set up the width. Right now, we're just going to set the anchor point and the actual position of the text box component 
which we want at the the bottom. So if you remember the game, she's on the right portion. So the lower the lower left portion is free. And that's where we're going to drop in the text. So the position is zero, which is all the way to the left of the screen. And size one is the very bottom of the screen. It's because we set her anchor point at the bottom. So once the music starts, we will add her in. So the way to add her in is simply add and or I mean add the text box in. It's add woman text box. And we are done with our tutorial. If it works, let's see. Okay, let's press the text start button. Uh, the animation starts. She's moving. She's getting bigger. We're getting closer to the character and then it's her cry for help while the music is playing. Fantastic. Congratulations. We are done with our introduction tutorial to sprite effects with scaling and rotation. Okay, time to celebrate. Go out and grab a coffee, some type of treat for yourself. Maybe some glico preps potentially a cookie, possibly a choco marshmallow. Most important, have fun and have a great day. Thanks for joining us. Subscribe to the channel for updates on the more than 50 videos I've made on Flame. The videos with source code are also available for free on Teachable, 100% free course. This is a hobby. In whatever way you choose to learn, make sure you have fun and unleash your creativity. Have a fantastic day.